Today, I'll show you how to give your images a natural color boost using the calibration tool found in Adobe Camera Raw. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I want to show you the uh, calibration tool found inside the Adobe Camera Raw filter. And it's a very good tool for adding a really natural boost of color to your images. Now I've showed you other ways of adding natural color boost to your images. You know, using like the TK7 Go panel, using saturation of vibrance masks. Uh, that's one way of doing it. But there's many different ways of adding color boost to your images. And this is one more to add to your arsenal. Now I really recommend that you do this probably near the end of your workflow if you just need that little extra bit of color in there. But let me show you how easy this is to work with. And I have uh, four different images to work with. This one, this one, this one, and this one. I've used this one in the last video. It's a little bit weak in color. I used it for some color grading, but on this particular tutorial, I'm gonna show you how we can add some extra oomph to the color and we're gonna really boost it up. And it's gonna be quite dramatic on this image, so stay tuned. But we'll start with this one first. By the way, before we start, I just want you to know that Topaz Gigapixel AI is on sale right now. And it's a fantastic program for upsizing your images. It's normally $99.99, but right now it's on sale for $79.99. Now, if you'll click on my affiliate link in the description below this video, you'll save an additional 15%. If you use my promo code, David Kelly at checkout, that'll get you another 15% off, which is a really nice savings. That works on Gigapixel or any Topaz product. And they also have this image quality bundle on sale right now, which includes Sharpen AI, Gigapixel AI, and Denoise AI. And you'll also get an additional 15% off that if you use my promo code, David Kelly. And that also works with any license renewals. And if you do that, it helps my channel and I appreciate it. And hey, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please do that. And uh, if you like my tutorials, give them a like and share it with your friends. It helps my channel to grow, and I really appreciate that. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I went ahead and duplicated the background layers to all four of these images just to save some time. And I just went ahead and named it Natural Color Boost Camera Calibration ACR. So let's go ahead and launch the Adobe Camera Raw Filter. It's found up here under Filters, Camera Raw Filter. And that'll launch the camera raw filter. Now here's all the different adjustment tabs in here. And the calibration is generally found at the bottom of the list. However, now you can move these tabs around. You can right click on these tabs and you can go edit panels to show. So if you wanted to change this calibration position, you can go ahead and click on your up arrows, see that, and you could like you can move it up to the top or leave it at the bottom, wherever you want to do it. And then after you've changed your order of your different uh tabs you can just click OK and you can even remove tabs that you don't want for instance if you don't use the geometry tool you can go ahead and uncheck that and it won't be there for you but I leave them all on I'm just going to click OK but you can reorder your tabs if you'd like let's go ahead and open up the calibration tab now I'm not going to get into all the nitty-gritty of this particular calibration tool but you can use this on your raw files. This is just a TIFF file I'm using this on, but you can use it on your raw files at the beginning of your editing process. I'll do another tutorial on that. But for now, this is just adding boost to images inside of Photoshop. And it's at the, again, at the end of the process, okay? But this works different than just a typical color saturation tool. In other words, this is working with your primary colors of red, green, and blue. And that's about as deep as I'm going to go into it. But it does things on a much more natural level than, say, like a saturation control would do. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute or two. But for now, let's go ahead and do some simple adjustments on here. Now, I usually like to start at the bottom. I'm going to take this uh, blue saturation slider, the blue primary color saturation slider. I'll start moving it to the right, but notice the image is not turning blue, but the overall saturation of the image is coming up, and I find that very interesting. But let me show you something in the color blue. If I hover over with this uh, magnification tool over this yellow here, take a look at my histogram. There's 242 pixels of red in it. There's 215 green pixels in it, and there's 73 blue pixels in it. Now, if I take the saturation slider and bump it up even more, now hover over that same area, now there's 247 red, 
220 green and 69 blue. So whenever I adjust this blue saturation, it's affecting all the pixels, not just blue, but red and green as well. I don't quite understand how it all works, but I'm just looking at the image and seeing the result. But for my eye, when I had the saturation right around 55, I thought it looked really good. I'm getting a nice boost. Now I'm not seeing a bunch of blue, but I'm looking at the overall color in the image and it looks good. And then what I'll do secondly is take my blue hue slider and kind of shift it to the right and to the left and move it to where I think it looks really nice for my taste on the image. And I think right, well, pretty much right where it was. I may just go a little bit left to like a minus eight in the hue and I think that color looks good. And I'm looking at the yellows and the greens and actually all the colors, but that looks good. And next I'm gonna move up to the uh, green primary and I can move it to the right and see what kind of results I get. And look, I can really give myself a nice boost on those yellows like that. And I think that looks really pretty there. Now I'll play with the hue just till it looks right for me. And I think right about there. And then I'll go with the red saturation now for the red primary color you would think i'd get tons of red when i move to the right but i don't right but it's giving me a nice color boost here so again i'm going to boost it to where i think it looks good without overdoing it but maybe right around there and then now we'll shift the hue one way or the other depending if i want it more yellow or not quite as yellow but maybe right around there now we have this eye right here we can see the before and the after isn't that beautiful? Here's the before and the after, but look at that really nice natural color boost. And by the way, in case you're wondering, I don't usually touch the shadow control. Now let's go ahead and click OK and that'll send us back into Photoshop. Now let's take a look. Here's our before and here's our after, but isn't that beautiful? And don't forget you have this opacity slider. You can always pull it back. You can also make this into a smart object before you take it into Adobe Camera Raw. That way you can go back and retweak uh, without starting from scratch again, if, if you like, which is probably not a bad idea, but I'm not doing that today. And don't forget you have your blending modes. So if you wanted to affect the color without affecting the tones of the image, you could change this to the color blend mode and it's only going to affect the colors. So don't forget that as well. That's extra things you can do. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this in the color blend mode because I think it looks good. Here's again the before and here's the after. Now let me shut this layer off and grab a hue saturation adjustment layer and make a comparison here. Let's go ahead and increase our colors with the hue saturation adjustment layer to say a decent amount of color, say somewhere around in there to boost up the color. All right, now let me go ahead and shut it off. Now let's take a look at the natural color boost with the camera calibration tool. Look how much more defined everything looks. We're getting a real nice natural boost. So we compare this with this. And I think you'll agree this is a much better way of getting that extra color boost. Now let's go a little bit quicker. Let's move on to the next image. So we have this image here. I already have the background layer duplicated. We're going to go ahead and launch the camera off filter. We're going to get right at it here. I'm going to start out with the blue primary, pull up the saturation, and I'll stop when I think it looks good to me. And I'm thinking right around there. And now I'm going to go ahead and shift the hue one way or the other just so I get the hue the way I like it. And I'm thinking right around there looks good. Now I'm going to go with the green primary. And this is the way I work. Start at blue, go to green, and OK. And I'm looking at mainly the orange tones and all the colors, but mainly the orange tones, maybe right around there. Now let me work with the hue one way or the other, make them a little more on the oranger side, right around there. And now let's work with the red primary. And again, I don't want to oversaturate those orange tones, but I want it to just look really pretty. Maybe right around there, and let's play with the red primary or the red you and I think maybe there looks good now let's take a look here's the before I'm just clicking on this eye and holding down my mouse here's the before and here's the after but isn't that beautiful look at all that beautiful color let me click OK now again here's the before and here's the after and if it's too strong just take the opacity and pull it back a little bit if you felt you went a little bit too strong and maybe i'll do that i'm going to pull it back to an 86 here's the before and here's the after let's move on to the next image we have the bird i've already duplicated the background layer let's launch the camera raw filter 
And let's go ahead and get right on to the calibration tool. So this blue I can really bring up in this bird. I'm gonna start with the uh, blue primary. Now when I take it to the right, you notice the blues are coming out, but all, a lot of other colors are coming up too. So I'm gonna take this blue up a decent amount, maybe somewhere right around there. Now let's work with the uh, hue. Find the right hue, and I think right there looks good. And now let's go to the uh, green primary so that we can add more color here. Now the greens are really strong in this image, so I think I'm gonna pull those back. So I'm gonna pull back on the green here. And it's also affecting the blue. Can you see that when I pull the green back, the blue is getting a little bit weaker. So I'm gonna pull the green back and I'm gonna work with the hue a little bit one way or the other. And I think right there looks good. But what I, might do, what I might do now is bring up my saturation on the blue primary a little bit more and just pull back some of that blue. And now I'm going to go to the red and let's see, I'm going to move it to the right. No, I'm going to move it to the left as well. I'm going to cut back on some of that red, which is affecting all the colors as you can see. It's even affecting the blue when I really pull it back. So again, I'm going to pull it back right to around there. I think that looks really pretty. And if I want some more blue, maybe I can work with this blue saturation a little bit. Yeah, and just pull that up a little bit. Not much. I don't want to go too much. And I don't like the blue in here, but I can use the layer mask to get rid of that. But I like it. Let's see. Here's the before and here's the after. But see, you don't only have to pull saturation up. You can also pull saturation back. And I like all the color balance on this right now. It looks really nice. Let me go ahead and click OK. Now, here is the before and here's the after. Now check this out. All I need to do at this point is throw a layer mask on here, get myself a black brush, which I have, and I'm just gonna really quickly with 100% paint over this beak right here, just to get rid of that color on there, just like that, just a real quick job. And now if I hold the shift key down and click on this layer mask, you can see there it is without the blue removed from the beak and here it is with it. So I think that really helps it out. So we've taken this image from here, and we've went to here. And I really like the results, but there's a little too much blue up here for me, and there's a little bit of blue on this branch here and here. So what I'm going to do is get a hue saturation adjustment layer. And what I'm gonna do is use a targeted adjustment tool, and let me just find this blue color and just pull it off somewhat. Desaturate it. I'll desaturate it the whole, not quite the whole way, but just, maybe around there. I think that looks good. And what I'll do is change this from a white mask. I'll invert that command or control I to a black mask, get myself a brush and with white paint at, oh, let's say, let me try it at hundred percent and see what happens if I just paint the blue off the areas where I don't want the blue in. Okay. And it's only targeting the blue colors. Okay. So on this branch, I don't want it. And what I think I'll do up here is I'll change my brush to like 50% opacity and just paint some of that off of there as well. Just a little bit of that off. Now here is the before and here's the after. So it just gets rid of that blue. And now let's move on to the last image. Now this is one I used in a prior uh, video and I did some color grading on it. And what I think I'll do here is give it some more saturation. So I've already duplicated the background layer. This is a really great technique for helping out low saturated images. So let's go ahead and launch that camera off filter one more time. And let's start with the blue primary color and move it to the right and get some nice saturation in there. I can take it up a good bit here. And let's play with the hue a little bit. We can shift the hues. Let's go maybe somewhere in there looks pretty good. Now let me go with the green primary. And just bump up that saturation, maybe around there. Let's play with the hue. Warm it up a little bit with the hues. Maybe a little bit more of that green primary saturation. About there. And now let's try the red. But look how easy this is to do. Can you see? Really easy to do. A little bit of the red saturation. Let's work with the hue. One way or the other. And I think right there. Here is the before and here's the after. But isn't that a simple and easy way to boost up the colors of your image? Let's go ahead and click OK. We'll be back in Photoshop and here's the before and here's the after. Now if it's too strong we can pull the opacity back just a little wee bit. 
before and after, but I like it. Well, there it is, everyone. Uh, Give this one a try and let me know what kind of results you're getting. I'd really love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon that every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.